Yes? Something you need? Um, I don't think you have the correct aptitude. I could give you some pointers though. You may be able to pass them on to someone you know. Let's just go over there, away from the others. For safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? All right. It is my job to spin yarns after all. Which one? It will come to you soon, I'm sure. Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well, the crows would have you believe that it is an involved process that takes years of training, the sort that tests both your resolve and your endurance. Survive that process and maybe, just maybe, you're good enough to start being considered one of them. But quite frankly, the truth is that all it requires is the desire to kill people for a living. It's surprising how well one can do in such a field. I don't know about that. It's simply a slightly different skill set from your average killer, as I see it. An assassin simply specializes in striking from stealth, and in maximizing that first attack to be as lethal as possible. Debilitate your foe, either by poison or by crippling their limbs, makes any follow-up combat you need to engage in that much simpler. See? Getting paid for the act is beside the point. An assassin is more a tactical choice than a lifestyle. Of course, the crows like to pretend that their abilities are trade secrets, shrouded in shadows and wrapped in a blanket of mystery. So let's just keep this between you and me, shall we? Hmm? Here I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Well, now, I imagine that's a very fair question. Being an assassin, after all, is a, a living, at least as far as such things go. I was simply never given the opportunity to choose another way. So, if that choice presents itself, why should I not seize upon it? Now that you mention it, I am not entirely certain. I was but a boy of seven when I was purchased. For three sovereigns, I'm told. Which is a good price, considering I was all ribs and bone and didn't know the pommel of a dagger from the pointy end. The crows buy all their assassins that way. Buy them young, raise them to know nothing else but murder. And if you do poorly in your training, you die. <coughs> Of course. You compete against your fellow assassins, and those who survive are rightfully proud of it. In Antiva, being a crow gets you respect. It gets you wealth. It gets you women. And men. Or whatever it is you might fancy. But that does not mean doing what is expected of you always. And it means being expendable. It's a cage, if a gilded cage. Pretty, but confining. As for what I'll do in the future, presuming that there is one, I truly can't imagine. It might be interesting to go into business for myself, for a change. Far away from Antiva, of course. For now, naturally, I go where you go. And here I am, happy to be had. Isn't it wonderful how things work out that way? Come now, enough chit-chat. Talking about the crows summons them, you know. Any Antivan fishwife could tell you so. Woo! <laughs> 
Yes. Sitting, as you observed. Your grasp of the obvious is remarkable. Warden, if I truly disliked you, I would leave. That I am still here, you may interpret however you choose. I know. Parshera. Was there anything else? I am hardly surprised. To answer a question. For someone so dismissive of questions, you ask a great many. Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Why do you? So if this blight were in Orlais, it could consume the land with impunity. Don't strain yourself pondering that. I do not know why the Arishok sent us. He commands and I go. A portion of it. Were you not at Ostagar when the army was overwhelmed? That is your answer. Yes. I cannot go home. Thank you. Can we move on? We keep the dark spawn waiting. As you wish. Yes. I am hardly surprised. Very well. As you wish. Have you encountered many abominations, apart from the ones in the Circle Tower? Ah, yes, Connor, of course. The first time I saw an abomination, my blood turned to ice. It was months before the nightmares stopped. It was the knowledge that I could easily become one of them frightened me the most. One slip. All it takes is one slip, and everything you are is simply gone. Replaced by madness. And there is no turning back, or at least that's what they say. Of late, I have begun to wonder if... if there is any way an abomination can be... cured. Or if a mage could be so possessed and still retain their sanity. Their... humanity. Yes, it is madness and cruelty that define abominations. If those are lacking, if the mage remembers the person they truly are, then they are not an abomination. I never saw that. Thank you for showing me another way of looking at it. Is there something you need? I will answer to the best of my ability. What? You found Flemeth's grimoire? Ever since we discovered the condition of the Mage's Tower, I had wondered if it might be recoverable. But I had yet to speak of it to you. How fortunate that you found it on your own. You have my thanks. I will begin study of the tome immediately. 
I do not intend to squander this opportunity to learn more than Flemeth wished me to know. This should be interesting. Await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> By others, do you mean yourself? Then I shall teach you what I can whenever we are in camp, provided you have the will to even make the attempt, that is. I await your command. So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> I await your command. At times, perhaps, a world full of people and buildings and things was all very foreign to me. If I wished companionship, I ran with the wolves and flew with the birds. If I spoke, it was to the trees. Don't be foolish. I recall the first time I crept beyond the edge of the wilds. I did so in animal form, remaining in the shadows and watching these strange townsfolk from afar. I happened upon a noblewoman by her carriage, adorned in sparkling garments the likes of which I had never before seen. I was dazzled. This, to me, seemed what true wealth and beauty must be. I snuck up behind her and stole a hand mirror from the carriage. It was encrusted in gold and crystalline gemstones, and I hugged it to my chest with delight as I sped back to the wilds. Flemeth was furious with me. I was a child and had not yet come into my full power, and I had risked discovery for the sake of a pretty bauble. To teach me a lesson, Flemeth took the mirror and smashed it upon the ground. I was heartbroken. And a foolish one. Flemeth was right to break me of my fascination. Beauty and love are fleeting and have no meaning. Survival has meaning. Power has meaning. Without those lessons I would not be here today, as difficult as they might have been. They did indeed. To return to your original question, perhaps my time in the wilds was indeed lonely. But such was how it had to be. I find myself at times wondering what might have become of the girl with the beautiful golden mirror. But such fantasies have no place amidst reality. I await your command. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. I am here because Flemeth commanded me to aid you. Why? Do you wish me to leave? I can do so if you prefer. Then I assume our discussion ends here. I 
await your command. We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Is there something you need? It is no trouble. I am. Oh, this should be good. Go ahead. Oh, you wish to know about Antiva, do you? The only way to truly appreciate it would be to go there. It is a warm place, not cold and harsh like this Ferelden. In Antiva it rains often, but the flowers are always in bloom, or so the saying goes. Every land has its assassins. Some are simply more open about their business than others. I hail from the glorious Antiva city, home to the royal palace. It is a glittering gem amidst the sand, my Antiva city. Do you come from some place comparable? No? That is too bad. If you were, then surely you would spend as much time boasting about it as I do. Hmm. You know what is most odd? We speak of my homeland, and for all its wine and its dark-haired beauties and the lilo flutes of the minstrels, I miss the leather the most. I mean the smell. For years I lived in a tiny apartment near Antiva City's leather making district, in a building where the crows stored their youngest recruits, packed in like crates. I grew accustomed to the stench, even though the humans complained of it constantly. To this day the smell of fresh leather is what reminds me most of home more than anything else. Oh, not so long, I know. It is my first time away from Antiva, however, and the thought of never returning makes me think of it constantly. Before I left, I was tempted to spend what little coin I possessed on leather boots I spotted in the store window. Finest Antivan leather. Perfect craftsmanship. Ah, but I was a fool to leave them. I thought, ah, Zevran, you can buy them when you return as a reward for a job well done. More the fool I, no? Ah. 
Yes, and now here I am. One simply never knows what is to come next. How could I have suspected I would end up defeated by a beautiful Grey Warden? A woman who then spares my life? I could not. I say you are beautiful because it is true. Should I not? <coughs> I'm not sure that that's the route I would take, were I to continue old habits, but as you wish. Now, if it is all the same to you, I'd prefer not to speak more of Antiva. It makes me wistful and hungry for a proper meal. Here I am. Oh, I certainly could, but I won't. I swore to the crows that the things they taught me were to remain a secret. And while, yes, they are already angry at me, I'd rather not push things, you see. If you are truly insistent, well, let me think about it. The crows are already angry at me, yes? Who knows? That's a wonderful thought. I don't know what to say. That's a generous gift. Thank you ever so much. What's on your mind? Oh, yes, and thank you for asking. I'm feeling much better today. Well, thank you for your kindness, my dear. It certainly warms these rickety old bones. What's on your mind? I will answer to the best of my ability. What's on your mind? Hmm. Is something troubling you? You are one of the two surviving Grey Wardens in Ferelden. You defend all of us and much rests on your shoulders. It may not mean much to you, but thank you for having the courage to continue to fight. And that gives me hope.
Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? All right. It is my job to spin yarns after all. Here, look at this. Do you know what this is? I picked it in Lothering. I remember thinking, how could something so beautiful exist in a place with so much despair and ugliness? I probably should have left it alone, but I couldn't. A darkspawn would come and their taint would just destroy it. So I've had it ever since. I thought that I might give it to you, actually. In a lot of ways, I think the same thing when I look at you. I guess it's a bit silly, isn't it? I just thought, here I am, doing all this complaining, and you haven't exactly been having a good time of it yourself. You've had none of the good experience of being a Grey Warden since you're joining. Not a word of thanks or congratulations. It's all been death and fighting and tragedy. I thought maybe I could say something. Tell you what a rare and wonderful thing you are to find amidst all this. Darkness. I'm glad you like it. Now, if we could move right on past this awkward, embarrassing stage and get right to the steamy bits, I'd appreciate it. Cold. Damn, she saw right through me. I'll be... <laughs> I'll be standing over here until the blushing stops. Just to be uh, safe. You know how it is. Anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Well, 
If you're really interested, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. So, as I said, things were going well. But good things must come to an end. One day, a noble woman came to my stall. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. No balls. They're touchy like. Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I had been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never look back. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? Look, we... we don't rob people, all right? We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the law's tigs, what good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. People flee from the Blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes, my boy and I, we find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural, working with enchantments. He might have even been leery maddled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected, and with your discount.
and your friends are formidable folk, indeed. I'm sure... The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do the Templars of the Chantry. There are always areas to improve on, Grey Warden. The most useful for my talents are runes. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, Grey Warden, as do... The sincerity of your cause has drawn them together under a common banner. It would not have happened otherwise. You are wise to invest in the effectiveness of your followers. The Circle of Magi stands ready to assist, as is my duty, Grey Warden. Have you heard much about the Grey Wardens of old? Griffins. <laughs> Alas, that seems to be the only thing people remember from the tales. The mighty flying mounts that bore the Grey Wardens into battle. Unfortunately, they've all passed back into the Maker's hand. <laughs> so that wish will have to go unfulfilled. It was said that watching the Wardens ride in on their white griffins was enough to rouse a weary heart and put the dance back in the step of an old man. The Grey Wardens were powerful, feared and respected, but they also inspired the common people. I remember a tale that was told to me many years ago. The Blight had ravaged the land for months, and the armies of the great kings had amassed for one last stand as the sun burst through the clouds that boiled and churned in the dark sky above, it illuminated a vast, seething horde of darkspawn, with the archdemon at its head. And it was then, when courage seemed to fail, and all lost to death and despair, that the Grey Wardens came. They arrived with the beating of wings like mighty war drums, and stood before the armies of men. The Grey Wardens, grim and fearless, marched forth, ever between the men and the encroaching darkspawn. They formed a shield of their own bodies and held that line until the archdemon was dead and the last darkspawn lay trampled in the dirt, and then, demanding neither reward nor recognition for their sacrifice, the Grey Wardens departed. When the clouds finally rolled back, and the sun shone full upon the blighted ground, the great kings knew that they had lost no men, and none of their blood had been spilled. This is a tale about no battle the Grey Wardens have fought, and yet about them all. They have always defended us from the Darkspawn, taking losses so we do not have to. People may have forgotten over the centuries, but nothing has changed. This knowledge has been blessing and burden to Grey Warden's past. And now, it shall be your blessing and your burden. What's on your mind? 
No, you won't. You wonder sometimes, don't you? If your life would be better if you weren't who you are. When I was a young woman in the tower, I came to the realization that the circle would be my life, and I would know no other. Family, love, a simple life. These were things that others took for granted, that I would never have. It made me very moody. All I could think of was being trapped in that tower with no way out and no end in sight. I started hating my life and myself, and one night I found myself in the tower's chapel. I was seeking refuge, maybe answers. Well, I was dreadfully morose, surly, anyway. Where was I? Ah, yes, the chapel. I must have looked tearful or made some noise because the revered mother came out and decided to speak to me. And because I had no one else to talk to, I talked to her. I must have said many silly things, but she told me that the Maker puts us all on our paths for a reason, and fighting our intended course is what causes so much anguish. I thought the old biddy was full of rubbish. I was 15, maybe 16, and I knew everything. So I left, but I always found my way back to that chapel. And as the years passed, I began to see the truth of her words. We were supposed to be polar opposites, mage and priest. But we weren't. There was much about us that was the same. The revered mother had lived in the Chantry all her life, as I had been in the tower for all of mine. She taught me that you can find your family in the people around you, that you can love your work and find fulfillment in duty, and there is joy even in self-sacrifice. If you put others before yourself, then their well-being is yours, and their happiness is your happiness. You can scream and cry and be angry about life as a Grey Warden. Or you can accept it and allow yourself to see the good in it. This is your choice. What's on your mind? It is no trouble.
Yes. Indeed. Yes. Here we are, Soldier's Peak. Maker's breath. Look at the size of her. What a fortress. I told you the map would get us through the tunnels. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. It's just teeming with history. Can't you feel it? So, I'll follow you about, from a distance. This place has the stench of death. I expect there's trouble up ahead. Soldier's Peak. Looks like these better centuries, more like. <laughs> yes, my friend. <laughs> Fall back! Fall back already! Taking the peak will not be easy, my lord. I gave the Wardens one chance to die with honor. Instead, they hold up like cowards. We follow the King's advice, then. Starve them out. But the peak has months of supplies. Then we wait. When they are too weak to lift their weapons, we will send them to their final judgment. What, what was that? Felt a bit woozy there. I'm not mad, am I? You saw it too. I've heard an Orlesian ballad about something like this. A beauty trapped in a dream. In the song, Belisa never wakes up. Your prissy friend here is making me nervous, Warden. How is this even possible? The place must truly be haunted. The Veil? Demons? Thank Andraste you came, Warden. <sighs> After you.
Shall we complete? There's more up ahead. 